As soon as we became involved with eels, we kind of couldn't go back. So we have made, as far as we know, the very first eelskin instruments in the world from Tasmanian freshwater eels. We were asked to play the Mona Foma in 2021. They asked us to respond to the river and to not play our normal violin and guitar. We were playing on a boat, so we went and asked the skipper what's important to know about this, this place, Kanamaluka. And the skipper said, uh, eels and mud. We started researching them. At that point, I don't think we knew anything about eels. In Tasmania, I think, in most bodies of water, there'll be eels around. They are quite hard to find. Um, they tend to hide under the mud, so they try to sort of sit under under where the light is. Turns out that these freshwater eels, anguilla, are super ancient. The dinosaurs may have still been alive when these eels were first evolving. They're born about 4,000 kilometres north of here. The eels spend their whole lives in these rivers and lakes, fattening up and lurking. At the very end of their life, they go back home, and we just loved that notion. We thought we would base our instruments on some of the many skin instruments of the world. And for this instrument, we based it on the erhu, which is a Chinese instrument, usually uses a python skin. It's obviously a very different construction to a, to a wooden instrument. Very standard sort of drum technique of having a frame. But yeah, it sort of sounds between a Okinawan sanshin, a gimbri, and, uh, and, and a banjo. never made an instrument before and uh, we don't know how to catch an eel. The first problem to solve was how do we get hold of an eel? And uh, unfortunately neither of us are fisher people. Um, so I'm Chinese. I come from a culture that has a lot of history of eating eels and harvesting eels. I am sort of a chef and a cook. I have a background in marine science. We've had a lot of help along the way with eel harvesters of, of Tasmania, the export industry. We actually had our friend and chef, Masaki, who is a professional sushi chef, and also come from the eel districts of Japan, actually skin the eel uh, for us for the first time. So this is what we came up with as the prototype. You can see it's just a piece of wood. This is a masking tape reel and we've stretched the skin over it and just sewed it, sewed it in. And then we just have a contact mic here to pick up the sounds because this prototype is super quiet. We were definitely surprised that the prototype sounded anything at all, let alone good. I've been playing with this prototype for the last two years and audiences always love it so much. A luthier is someone that makes many different forms of instruments and with Daniel he makes quite a fair few different things, guitars, mandolins, uh, even some violins in the past. This evolved into a beautifully designed uh, eel hu, as we're calling it. So technically the instrument making and the physics of it are not that different. They are in the family of skin topped instruments. An eel is very different from a snake or a lizard. It is, first of all, an aquatic animal or fish. If you've ever worked with eel skin before, you'll know that it's very, very slimy and blubbery. Hours and hours and hours of trying to remove these layers to make it thin enough to be able to stretch a little bit over these instruments. Keep pulling. Our luthier did some beautiful woodwork and stretched a, a wider piece of eel skin over a bowl. And so now we can actually hear the sound acoustically, not just when we're amplifying it with a contact mic. It's sort of like a 
than our hoo, but it also has like a deeper, richer tone. And we think that's because the eel skin itself is very thick. What we loved about these instruments is that they kind of gave us that thing that we were searching for. There's just so much potential for colour and texture. So this piece is very much inspired by all the different cultures around the world that have a very deep connection to the eels. It's also a great way to talk about the larger issues like deep time, climate change, the marine environments that often gets neglected. I think if you actually spend some time with eels, you just totally fall in love. We're trying to bring them a bit closer, bring them into the spotlight, bring them out of the murky depths.